The Seals and Sealing Network condemns the report issued today by the World Trade Organization Dispute Settlement Panel. The decision to uphold the current ban on seal products throughout the European Union both threatens livelihood of people in coastal communities and jeopardizes wild fish stocks in Canada and in other jurisdictions around the world. That was Dion Dakins. He's chair of the International Seal and Sealing Network. He's also president of Carino uh, Industries out of uh, Newfoundland. He'll join us in a minute, but he was responding there to a report from the World Trade Organization upholding an EU ban. The EU or the World Trade Organization says the EU seal regime are inconsistent with Article 2.1 because the detrimental impact caused by these exceptions does not stem exclusively from legitimate regulatory distinctions. And consequently, the exceptions accord imported seal products treatment less favorable than that accorded to like domestic and other foreign seal products. But it's not inconsistent with Article 2.2 because it fulfills the objective of addressing the EU public moral concern on seal welfare to a certain extent. So it's a violation of trade rules, but it's a good one because it, it's about the cute little seals. Dion Dakins joins us now from our studios in Ottawa. Mr. Dakins, uh, let's start there. This idea that seals are cute and cuddly, therefore they should never be killed. That's, that's essentially what's at the heart of this ongoing battle, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's been uh, certainly a, an ongoing discussion for over 40 years now. And uh, the amount of misinformation that exists around the seal business uh, and seal products has now manifested itself in regulation uh, in the European Union. Now the WTO says that, in fact, uh, on public moral grounds, the EU does have the authority to ban uh, seal products based on this misinformation. And that should be very alarming and concerning for a lot of uh, Canadian industries. Uh, where do you draw the line on good or bad as it pertains to uh, a country's right uh, to accept or not accept a product based on uh, how it's perceived or how single issue uh, groups have uh, used information to achieve an end objective to uh, destroying a market. All right, so your organization, your, the company you work with, the organization you're with represents many uh, employers, many manufacturers, but Carino, the company that you're with, how many people do, do they employ and, and what do you actually do? Are, is your company out there clubbing white coat baby seals? And I have to ask that because that's what the, your opponents always put up. They go, oh, these cute little baby seals. That's not what's happening. So tell us what is happening and the jobs and livelihoods affected. Uh, well, we employ 40 people, 52 weeks of the year. Um, just like any other small business in Canada, we produce uh, dressed and dyed seal skins uh, that we have purchased the raw material from fishermen uh, who hunt on the eastern coast of Canada in uh, Nunavut in the north and also through Nova Scotia developing gray seal efforts. We also produce omega-3s which are then transformed into capsules or liquid form for human consumption and for animal feed. Uh, and we deal in seal meat which is uh, used for animal feed sources and also for human consumption. Uh, when it comes down to this particular decision by the WTO, what they're saying is that the, uh, the products themselves are morally offensive. We haven't hunted white coat se uh, seals in over uh, 30 years in Canada, yet the animal rights groups, and they are animal rights groups, they're not animal welfare groups, uh, strategically still continue to use the image of the white coat because it strikes uh, a sensitivity with people. This industry has improved to meet market demands. We have improved our animal welfare. We have improved our uh, dressing and processing techniques to meet the highest environmental standards. And uh, this decision by the WTO is, is arbitrary, it's discriminatory, and it's based on false information. Is, is it going to hurt people's livelihoods? Or, or is your company uh, going to have to lay people off, or has that already happened because the ban's been in place for some time? There's been a resizing in the industry. Companies have exited and, other, and hours remains. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a customer base that we continue to service and we'll grow with that customer, with that customer base and try and re-establish new markets. And this is where the, uh, I guess, the resolve of Canada to appeal this at the WTO is, uh, is a strong um, and well-received uh, effort on our, from our perspective because we'll helpfully, hopefully perform a plat provide a platform from which we can do basic marketing and, and educate markets on what the seal business is and uh, hopefully provide the wanting uh, products to those markets. All right, I want to ask you about eating seal meat in a moment, but first I want to get the comment quickly on the animal rights groups because you rightly pointed out they're animal rights groups, not animal welfare, and they're very well funded. I've been all over the place and seen them show up with that seal there and one of their handlers. I was at the White House once to cover Prime Minister Harper and they showed up. They have a lot of money behind them, don't they? 
Oh, certainly. I mean, if you want to calculate the value of the Canadian industry, you have to calculate the value of these uh, organizations that they earn on the backs of sealers and uh, off the backs of seals. There's uh, very little interest in them actually having the seal hunt stopped at the highest levels. They're, it's part of their business model and they're part of ours. Uh, the reality is that uh, the world and these uh, bodies like the World Trade Organization uh, need to start balancing decisions about uh, trade restrictions or not to impose trade restrictions on the reality that the world is facing feeding 7 billion people um, but food security is a huge issue, and when a country or group of countries can, uh, you know, I guess gang up on a very small industry uh, with false information, institute bans that are going to hurt livelihoods, that are going to do nothing for the improvement of seal treatment, because seals are going to continue to be killed around the world, anywhere where they exist, there's a conflict with fisheries. And uh, there will be a continued requirement, so why not have a market incentive to do so? Sell uh, so people that are, are watching on eating seal sometime. Any of my friends from Newfoundland or Labrador have all tried seal. Some of them love it, some of them don't. I've had it. I liked it. I take omega-3s. Sell me on trying it. we got about 30 seconds left. Oh, it's a fantastic product. Not everybody has the same taste for everything. And uh, don't knock it until you try it. Uh, but uh, what, What's the best way to serve it up? Oh, from my perspective, uh, uh, fresh. Uh, nice loin, uh, quickly fried, some salt and pepper. Don't mess with it too much and, uh, and let it go from there. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to try it uh, that way one day. Uh, Dion Dakins, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.